Previously, in the previous examples, uh, I gave you resonant structures where I had already drawn in one electron pushing arrow, and then you had to draw the resonant structure suggested by that arrow. What we're going to do now is I'm going to keep giving you the electron pushing arrows, but now I'm going to put two electron pushing arrows in the picture. So I'll give you two arrows and you have to draw the new resonant structure that's suggested by that. Now again, um, I admit that this is not a skill that you would use that much directly um, in uh, real OCHEM because usually you're not going to be given the electron pushing arrows. Uh, but again, it's our goal here to work methodically and build up our skills step by step. It's useless to try to come up with the arrows on your own unless you can already interpret the arrows if you were given them by somebody else. Um, so again, I'm intending these videos for people who are finding this material to be difficult. Well, if you're finding this material to be difficult, it's important first to understand how to draw the resonance structure if you're given the arrows. And then you can go on to draw the structure making up your own arrows. Try to, uh, try to draw the uh, resonance structure that is suggested by these electron pushing arrows. As usual, I hope that you paused the video and gave that a shot. Please remember to pause the video after each problem that I pose and try it on your own before you proceed. I also hope that you've been using the techniques that we've been going over. So one key technique is the redraw and modify technique. So we'll start by redrawing the picture, including redrawing the arrows. Now we're going to start at the initial tail. Start at the initial tail. That's this tail over here. Not this tail, because this tail is kind of in the middle of the whole process. We start at this tail, which is at the beginning of the sequence. The tail tells us where the electrons are coming from. So where are these electrons coming from? Well, this tail is pointing to a negative charge. We know that that really means that it's coming from a lone pair. But we don't need to erase the lone pair because it wasn't drawn in in the first place. But we do need to change the charge. Since this is losing electrons, it should lose its negative charge. And we can erase that portion of the tail. Now we look at the head, the next item in the sequence. Well, this head is pointing to the middle of a sigma bond. We know that that means that we're creating a pi bond. So let's draw the new pi bond. Now there's no need to change any charges here uh, because notice that this atom is both at a head and at a tail. This atom here is both at a head and at a tail. Um, so there's no need to change its charge. It's going to be gaining electrons from this head, but losing electrons from this tail. So we don't need to worry about the charges. So we're done with that arrow, and we can erase that. What do we do now? We go on to the next tail. What does this tail tell us to do? Well, where are the electrons coming from? They're coming from the pi bond. The tail is pointing to the pi bond, so I'll erase the pi bond. Again, there's no need to make any changes to the charge based on this tail. Uh, this atom just lost the pi bond, but we saw that even though this atom was losing the pi bond, it was gaining a pi bond from this head. So this atom is not changing its charge. So there's no need to change any charges, and I can erase that tail. And all we have left is this head. Where are the electrons going to? Well, the head is pointing to the atom. We know that when the head is pointing to the atom, we, that means we're creating a lone pair. Now, actually, we usually don't draw lone pairs, but we do need to show what's happening to the charge here. This atom started neutral, and it's gaining electrons. So it ends up with a negative charge. And now that we've figured out its charge, we can erase that head. And now you can see that all the arrows are gone, so we know we're done. We certainly should not make any more changes. Remember, we only make the changes that are forced upon us by the electron pushing arrows. We don't just make changes willy-nilly. There's no more arrows, so we're done. Let's check to make sure we got the charges right. I hope that you remember to do that. The net charge on this picture is negative 1, and the net part charge on the right-hand structure is negative 1. So those balance. All right, so now we've seen how to deal with electron pushing arrows when there's more than one arrow. We keep using the same approach. We keep redrawing the original picture and modifying it. Now notice the systematic approach. We begin at the initial tail. This tail over here. Not this tail in the middle, but the initial tail. We ask where are the electrons coming from, and we change the charge. Then we go to this head, and we make a change. Then we go to this tail, and we make any changes. And then we go to this head. Now, another point that we need to make here is maybe you've already noticed that we're only ever going to have to change the charge on two atoms. We always have to change the charge on the atom that's at the initial tail. 
And we always have to change the charge on the atom that's at the final head. Can you see why I'm calling this the initial tail? This isn't the initial tail because it's got another head pointing towards it. This is the initial tail. And here's the final head pointing over here. You never have to change the charge on any of the atoms in the middle of the string of arrows. Because every atom in the middle is both going to have a head pointing toward it and a tail going away from it. So there's no need to really think it through each time. On this problem, I gave a lot of thought to the fact that this carbon was not changing its charge. But there really wasn't any need to think about it so much. You're only going to change the charge on two atoms. The atom at the initial tail and the final head. So those are important concepts. The initial tail and the final head. Those are the atoms where we change the charge. We never change the charge uh, on any of the other atoms. We never change the charge on any of the atoms that are in the middle of this sequence of arrows. Try drawing the resonance structure that is suggested by these electron pushing arrows. Redraw and modify. We redraw the original picture, including redrawing the arrows. Now, we start at the initial tail. That's this one over here, not this one over here. The initial tail. Where are the electrons coming from? Well, the tail is pointing to a negative charge. We know that that means they're really coming from a lone pair. But the lone pair wasn't shown, so we don't need to erase it. Now, this is the initial tail, so we need to change a charge. This atom is losing electrons, so it's going to lose its negative charge. And we erase that tail. Next, we look at this head. Where are these electrons going to? Well, they're going to a pi bond. Now, right now we can see from this picture that we're in the middle of the string of arrows. So there's no need to make any changes in the charges when you're working on in the middle of the string of arrows. So I don't need to worry about charge. But I erase that arrow. Now I look at the next tail. Where are these electrons coming from? From the pi bond. So I erase the pi bond. And again, we're still here in the middle of the string of arrows, so there's no need to change any charges. We just learned on the previous problem that you do not need to change the charges on any of the atoms in the middle of the string of arrows. Now we look at the head. The head of this arrow is pointing to the nitrogen. We know that indicates the creation of a lone pair. We're not actually going to draw the lone pair. We usually don't do that. But now we're at the final head. Well, we know that at the final head, we have to change a charge. We always have to change a charge at the final head. This nitrogen started neutral, and it's gaining electrons, so it becomes negative. And now we're entitled to erase that head. And here's our correct picture. Let's double check that the charge is balanced. Here the charge is negative 1, and on the right-hand picture the charge is negative 1, so it looks like our charge is balanced. Once again, one of the big new concepts we're learning here when you have multiple arrows is that you're going to change the charges on exactly two atoms. We always change the charges on exactly two atoms. We don't change any other charges. We don't change the charges of any atoms in, uh, that are located at heads that are, or tails that are in the middle of the series of arrows. Notice that we did not make any changes to this double bond because there were no arrows going to or from that double bond. Only make the changes that are required by the arrows. If you use the redraw and modify technique, that will force you to only make the changes that you're required to make and not make any extraneous changes.